Shalom, precious brothers and sisters. I have a special guest with me today uh, who is joining our gathering. His name is Craig Ganya, and I'll allow him to introduce himself in just a minute. He's going to teach us about Passover and the connection between Passover and Shavuot. We say Shavuot in Hebrew. In English, we say Pentecost, the, the, the holiday of the giving of the Holy Spirit and also the giving of the Torah. So, Craig, please introduce yourself, and we'd love to hear the word. Hi, everyone. Yes, uh, my name is Craig Gagne, and uh, I'm originally from northern New York, uh, very close to Aquasalkney, um, where um, many uh, indigenous people live. Um, and we, um, I grew up in Malone, New York, um, and I was, we live 13 miles from the Quebec border and about to probably 15 minutes from the Ontario border. And uh, I moved to Ottawa uh, after getting married. Um, so I've been living here for over 30 years now. And uh, I came to the Ottawa Messianic Fellowship after asking a double barrel question to the Lord. And he kindly uh, invited me to, to this fellowship to learn more. And I've been learning over the years, um, and it, it's been a wonderful experience. I, I can't, every cycle of the Torah and the, the, um, the feast of, of Leviticus has brought new meaning to, to the word of God, uh, both the Old Testament and the, the New Testament. So, what I'd like to speak to you about today is the Omer count of Leviticus. Now, um, counting the Omer connects us to Exodus, our Exodus from Egypt, uh, to the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, which we celebrate every Shavuot to this day. Um, this practice emphasizes the Isra Israelites' journey from the physical freedom, from physical freedom from slavery and bondage to the spiritual liberation from the uh, idolatry of Egypt. Leading up to the journey to Mount Sinai, where a marriage covenant or ketubah between Jehovah and the Israelites was proclaimed. The count is also a period of introspection and spiritual development, not only as individuals, but as a unified community or a body having our minds and attitudes change to become more like Yeshua. As we await and anticipate Jehovah's Holy Spirit working in our hearts, but what exactly is an omer? An omer is a dry measure uh, related to the yield of a sheath of grain. This measure is disputed by scholars, some placing the measure as 3.64 liters or just slightly under a U.S. gallon. Um, but the Jewish study Bible uh, from 2014 places the Omer about 2.3 liters or slightly over a half a U.S. gallon, um, which is, of course, about two quarts. Though I'm no expert in grains and their yields, I tend to lean towards the, the latter measure. Um, the first mention of the Omer count occurs um, in Exodus 16, 15 to 18, in relation to manna. When the, when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, this is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent, the Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the Omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. The Omer count is first mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, uh, also in Leviticus, um, 
It is commanded, it's given to the children of Israel by Adonai. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel, saying to them, when you come into the land which I give you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. He shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it, and you shall offer it on that day. When you wave the sheaf, a male lamb of the first year without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord, it is a grain offering of two-tenths of an ephah, a fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made to the Lord for a sweet aroma, and its drink offering shall be of wine, one-fourth of a hen. You shall eat neither bread nor parched grain nor fresh grain until the same day that you have brought the offering to your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout the generations in all your dwellings. And you shall count for yourself from the day after the, sh the Shabbat, the, the first day of the week, which is Sunday, from the day that you brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall you count. To, uh, count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath, and then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Lord. Now, it is important to note that the month of Aviv is directly connected to the ripening of the barley harvest in the spring. The month of Aviv begins once the barley is in the fields and is declared to be fully formed. And then the new moon cited by two witnesses, only then can the month of Aviv be declared. The Passover preparations begin. In Deuteronomy 16, 1 through 12, we see the count and its relationship to the Passover and Shavuot, also known as Pentecost. Observe the month of Aviv and keep the Passover to the Lord your God. For in the month of Aviv, the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt by night. Therefore, you shall sacrifice the Passover to the Lord your God from the flock and, and the herd in the place where the Lord chooses to put his name. You shall eat no unleavened bread with it seven days. You shall eat unleavened bread with it, that is, the bread of affliction. For you came out of the land of Egypt in haste, that you may remember the, the, the day in which you came out of the land of Egypt all the days of your life, and no leaven shall be seen among you in all your territory, for seven days, nor shall any of the meat which you sacrifice the first day at the twilight remain overnight until morning. You may not sacrifice the Passover within any, within any of your gates, which the Lord your God gives you, but at the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his, his, to make his name abide. There you shall sacrifice the Passover at twilight at the going down of the sun, at the time you came out of Egypt, and you shall roast it and eat it in place, which the Lord your God chooses. And in the morning you shall turn and go to your tent. Six days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a sacred assembly to the Lord your God. You shall do no work on it. You shall count seven weeks for yourself, beginning to count the seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the grain. Then you shall keep the Feast of Weeks of the Lord your God with the tribute of a free will offering from your hand, which you shall give as the Lord your God blesses you. You shall rejoice before the Lord your God and your sons and your daughters and your male servant and your female servant and the Levite who is within your gate the stranger and the fatherless and the widows among you at the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. And you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt and you shall be careful to observe these statutes. We see in the scriptures after the Passover on the day after the weekly Sabbath, 
which is the first day of the week, uh, which we know as Sunday, the children of Israel were commanded be to begin the count of 49 days or seven weeks. This day, after the week of the Shab Sabbath, is the appointed day of first fruits, sometimes called, now this, I, I, I don't really have a good pronunciation in Hebrew, but it's called Sifrat Ha'omer, also know, known as Yom Bikarum. On this, on his day, on this day, the temple priest made a, wa a wave offering of first fruits of the barley harvest. Um, they tied a bundle the night before and cut it on the day of first fruits, along with the other required sa sacrifices given in, in Leviticus 23. So, um, what, ha what happened is the, the priests um, would go the evening before um, in the moonlight and they would tie off the barley in one sheet, but they would not cut it until the day of first fruits. Um, then they would bring it back and they would do the wave offering. The day after the weekly Sabbath, the count of the seven weeks was to be appointed the appointed time of Shavuot, what we call Pentecost. Paul illustrates the connection between the first fruits offering of the barley harvest and Yeshua's resurrection, as he describes Yeshua as the first fruits of those who died in 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But the fact that the Messiah has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who died for since death came through a man, also the resurrection of the dead has come through a man. For just as in the connection with Adam, all die, so in the connection with the Messiah, all will be made alive. But each in his own order. The Messiah is the first fruit. And then those who belong to Messiah at the time of this coming, then the culmination when the hands, he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, having put an end to every rulership, yes, to every authority and power. For he has to rule until he puts all of his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be done, done away with will be death. For he put everything in subjection under his feet. Though the, the gospels don't, do not document the daily Omer count. We can identify day one, day two, day three, the 40th day, uh, and the final day of, uh, where Shavuot begins. You, if you wish to read about um, what transpired uh, during these seven days, seven weeks of the Omer count, you only need to consult John 20, Mark 16, Matthew 28, and Luke 24. In reading these accounts, we can reflect them upon Yeshua's resurrection, the need for his death and resurrection after three days and three nights in the tomb, and his fulfillment of the Torah through the prophets and the Psalms. Looking back to the first Passover and the children of Israel's exodus from Egypt, we can see a process of preparation and purification of the children of Israel after departing Egypt, where they struggle in the desert as Moses leads them into the wilderness to Mount Sinai, where the pre-incarnate Messiah speaks face to face with Moses, who intercedes on their behalf, and where Jehovah, by his grace, gives him his Torah. As they begin a time of sojourning through the desert, beginning a time of pruning and preparation for them to enter the land of the promise and for the time for the Messiah to come. After Yeshua's resurrection on the first day of the Omer count, on the evening of the 16th of Aviv, at the first fruits or Yom Bikarim, 
Yeshua arises from the tomb before the dawn of the 17th. He arises victorious over death. Along with him also, the saints who slept arose, as we are told in Matthew 27 through 2752. Now, after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord had descended from the heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to, to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Yeshua, who is crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee, where you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and they ran to tell the disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up, and they took a hold of his feet and worshipped him. And then Yeshua said to him, them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. In Mark 16, 14 to 18, Yeshua appeared to the 11 as they were eating, and he reproached them for their lack of trust and their spiritual insensitivity in not having believed those who had seen him after he had risen. Later, at an unknown day, but sometime later in the Omer count, Mark 16, 15 to 18, Yeshua tells his disciples, as you go throughout the world, proclaim the good news to all creation. Whoever trusts and is immersed will be saved. Whoever does not trust will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who trust. In my name, they will drive out demons and speak with new tongues, not be injured if they handle snakes or drink poison and heal the sick by laying hands on them. On the second day of the Omer count, in Luke 24, 13 to 33, we see two disciples walking to Emmaus as they encounter a stranger walking along the way. That same day, the two of them were going towards a village about seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were talking with each other about the things that had happened. And as they talked and discussed, Yeshua himself came up and walked along with them. But something kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you talking about with each other as you walk along? And they stopped short and their faces downcast. And one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only person staying in Jerusalem that does not know the things that have been going on here for the last few days? What things? he asked them. And they said to him, The things about Yeshua from Nazareth. He was a prophet and proved it by the things that he did and said before God and all the people. Our head conim our leader had handed him over so that he could be sentenced to death and executed on a stake as a criminal. And we had hoped that he would be the one to liberate Israel. Besides all that, that today is the third day since these things have happened. And this morning, some of the women astounded us. They were at the tomb early and couldn't find his body. So they came back, but they also reported that he they had seen a vision of angels who said he is alive some of our friends went to the tomb and they found it exactly as the women had said but they didn't see him he said to them foolish people 
so unwilling to put your trust in everything the prophet spoke. Didn't the Messiah have to die like this before entering his glory? Then he started with Moshe and all the prophets. He explained to them the things that can be found throughout the Tanakh concerning himself. They approached the village where they were going. And Yeshua made as if he was going on farther. But they held him back, saying, Stay with us, for it's almost evening, and it's getting dark. So he went to stay with them. And as he was reclining with them at the table, he took the matzah, and he made the barak, and broke it, and they handed it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Then he became invisible to them. They said to each other, did not our hearts turn inside as he spoke to us on the road, opening up the thought to us? Later on the third day of the Omer count, we see in Luke 24, 33 to 40, 49. They got up at once and returned to Jerusalem and found the 11 gathered there with their friends saying, it is true, the Lord has risen. Simon saw him. And then the two told what had happened on the road and how he had become known to them in breaking of the matzah. They were still talking about it when there was a, there he was, Yeshua, standing among them. Startled and terrified, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said to them, why are you so upset? Why are these doubts welling up inside you? Look at my hands. It, it is I, myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I do. As he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Why they were still unable to believe it. For joy and stood there dumbfounded. He said to them, have you something here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, which he took and ate in their presence. Yeshua said to them, this is what I meant when I was still with you and told you everything written about me in the Torah of Moshe, the prophets and the Psalms had to be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the Tanakh, telling them, Here's what it says. The Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And, is, and in his name, re repentance leading to forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed to the people from all the nations, starting with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. Now I am sending forth you sending forth upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you've been equipped with power from above. Now on the fourth day of the Omer count, we read in John 21, 1 to 19. After these things, Yeshua showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. And they went out, immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning came, Morning had come, that Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was him. Then Yeshua said to him, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast a net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, the disciple who Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garments, for he had removed it. And he plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, 
for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging a net full of fish. And as, then as soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coal there and fish laid on it and bread. And Yeshua said to them, bring some of the fish which you've caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to the land full of large fish, 153. Although there were so many, the net was not broken. Yeshua said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Yeshua then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Yeshua said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Yeshua then again said to him, then he said, sorry, then he said to him, feed my lambs. He said to them, him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Simon said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said this to him a third time. Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Yeshua said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wish. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will regird you and you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke to signify but what by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Now on the, the 40th day of the Omer count, in Acts, um, one, Acts 1, 4 to 11, we read this. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard, me, you heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up into a cloud, and a cloud received them out of their sight. And while they were looking steadfastly towards the heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel who said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Yeshua, who is taken up from you into the heavens, will come in, a, in like manner as you saw him go to, into the heavens. On the, finally, on, the, on the, the 50th day, the day of Shavuot in Acts, Two, one to 34, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all 
with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as if a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house they were sitting. And then appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the, there was dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation. And when this sound occurred, the multitudes came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speak in their own language. Then they they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, one another, look, these are not, are these not all um, Galileans? And how is it that we hear them each in our own tongue, which we were born? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappad Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Pygraea, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans, Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So they are all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what could this mean? Others mocking said, they are full of new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all dwelling in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servant and on my maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I, I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall not be turned in the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before committing the before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord, it shall come to pass, whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Yeshua of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourself know, him being delivered by the, by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, have taken, have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart shall rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh will also rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor Will you allow your Holy One to see corruption? You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn an oath to him, that the first fruits of his body, according to the flesh, <clears throat> would be raised up, the, raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. 
he, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Yeshua God raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promises of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to the heavens, but, said, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all of the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Yeshua, whom you had crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and, and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Yeshua the Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and your children and all who are far off, as many as the Lord, the God, our God, will call. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Craig, for bringing that message. Amen.